Hey! It's me! I, I really, um, I really, I really wish it wasn't, because, uh, you know, I, I hate doing this, and I, but I promised you guys a video, so, you know, fuck you all, I hate you. Now, you guys may or may not have noticed that, uh, I've been away for a while. And I do apologize for my absence, as I've been really busy with real life stuff, and it's really hard to balance this stuff out. I do, however, plan to make my content more fluent upload-wise, as well as do this more frequently. That being said, I just want to get this out there. I really don't want my viewer base for this channel to be purely based on Sonic World, as I want to do other stuff other than upload updates and stuff. So if you're subscribed to my channel purely because of Sonic World, just note that I'm not going to be uploading Sonic World all the time. Instead, I'm going to be doing these a lot more frequently, because I enjoy this. If you're wanting constant updates on Sonic World itself, I'll link the Sonic World DX channel below in the description. Other than that, I'm sorry, I'm not going to be doing what I used to do all the time. So uh, for the meantime, <laughs> ah, bitch! now with that bullshit three out of the way, let's get straight into Crash Team Racing Nitro Field. And hey, you might have even realized that Gerbil is now 3D. That means the only thing stopping him and third degree murder of you is a glass plane. <laughs> From raping hogs to racing hogs, Crash has always managed to maintain his prominence and relevance in the platforming genre and the racing genre. Apart from when, in fact, he decides fucking not to, in which he has no presence or relevance for the next eight years. But hey, now he's back, and after the extreme success of the Crash Insane trilogy, Activision thought... Money! And so Activision decided to outsource their next project to a dev team called Beanox. Now these animal fucking maple syrup drinking creatures are best known for their work such as... Call of Duty! And... Call of Duty! Having been really into Crash Team Racing before any announcement of CTR Nitro Field, I gotta say, this game is absolutely phenomenal. Everything seems perfect, apart from when it's not perfect, and when it's not perfect, it fucking shits on its head. Now this game... <laughs> This game rustles my fucking jimmies in both a good way and a bad way. But I can't tell you everything now, so if you want to find that out, you gotta wait till the middle of the video. There's a catch, alright? There's a catch to this. I'm not just gonna tell you my thoughts. You wanna hear my thoughts? You gotta fucking wait. You gotta wait, alright? Let's start off with the premise of Crash Team Racing Nitro Field, and then explain what it is. Don't get confused by the Nitro Field part of the logo. This is a complete remake of Crash Team Racing. It just has Crash Nitro Kart elements from the PlayStation 2 mixed in. So essentially, this is a top to bottom remake of all the game modes, characters, levels, yada yada yada. It's the complete package. But to top it off, this game practically has all of the content from Nitro Kart, minus the adventure mode, which we'll get into later. Overall, you've got a lot of stuff to keep you entertained for a long time. You've got the adventure mode, you've got a plethora of tracks, game modes, multiplayer content online. It has everything you'd need to keep you engaged for a long time. Something that hasn't been remade from the ground up, however, are some of the character models, as it was kind of unnecessary to remake a lot of them, because a lot of them were brought back for the Insane Trilogy. So just a matter of taking them would be fine, which, you know, they did. I don't know why it sounds like I'm critiquing it. I'm not. I'm just fucking retarded. However, the new characters from the Nitro Kart game are actually remade from the ground up completely, which is actually phenomenal. A lot of the models look absolutely amazing, and I'm especially impressed by the Crunch and Nash model. They just look, they, they look phenomenal. Sorry, I'm gonna correct myself there. Everyone looks good except Penta, who looks like a dick on a stick. And hey, if a complete remake of a game roster isn't enough for you, well, there's heaps of characters you can get that are original. You've got Torna from Crash Bandicoot 1, and hey, you've even got the Trophy Girls from the original CTR, who weren't actually playable. But Beanox decided to bring them back with their own unique designs, voice actors, and personalities. I think my main complaint with the Trophy Girls, however, are the fact that they all look like they have some type of chlamydia. Something neat about the Trophy Girls, however, are the fact that they're all of different nationality. Now, usually I wouldn't give a flying fuck about this, as Overwatch and TF2 have done it to death, but that being said... Yes! From... Biscuit, anyone? Are you having a laugh? Your mum's an armadillo! Also, they made a bandicoot look Asian, and um, I, I don't know, I don't know how to feel about that. I don't have a problem with Asians, it's a matter of fact that there's an Asian bandicoot, it's just weird they shouldn't be doing this! But even then, this isn't the final roster, as every month they have an event which adds a new character or more. Hell, they're even adding Spyro the Dragon. And boy, personally, I couldn't give less of a fuck. When I was little, I thought Spyro was a pony. Among the seriously threatening roster, there's also a plethora of customization. You can customize your wheels, your car, your vinyl, even stickers. And thanks to the introduction of customization in this game, I have found my true love and passion. Cowboy fake crash. Gonna do the two step, then cowboy boogie. Grab a sweetheart and spin out with him. Do the whole down and get into it. 
That's right, amongst being able to customize your car, you can even customize the appearance of your character. Every character has some basic skins or some palette swaps, but on top of this, they have a legendary outfit that changes what they wear. Apart from Papu Papu, but hey, I see this as an absolute win. A few of these cosmetics are actually milestones for completing the story mode. You got 100%ing the game, you got getting halfway through the game, you got beating the bosses, etc. There's a reward for doing pretty much anything. Speaking of adventure mode, <laughs> oh boy. So, you pesky earth slugs like to race, eh? <laughs> well, I, Nitrous Oxide, am the fastest racer in the galaxy! The adventure mode for this game is kick ass! It's so great! The Bandicoot Bakaki oh, no. are hosting a race tournament all across Insanity Island. A drifting alien race champion sees what's happening on Earth, I nearly said Mobius, and decides to not only force himself into the competition, but increase the racing stakes. The Great Nitrous Oxide, which may I add is one of the coolest names for a villain ever, decides to challenge Crash and Co to an all-out race for the fate of their planet. Throughout the entirety of the adventure mode, Nitrous Oxide is constantly pestering and pressuring the player to come up with a champion to race him. The player must overcome all four bosses to prove he's worthy to finally take on Oxide. What's awesome about this is every boss reminds the player of the stakes at hand. It may not sound like much, but this incentive alone is absolutely fantastic in motivating the player to prove them wrong. Combine that with the fact that over the period of the game you grow to really hate Oxide, this is a really good technique. Excess information aside, the adventure mode isn't really different to what the core gameplay lays down already. You essentially go around the hub world doing races and getting keys to fight the bosses. There's some bonus content too like the CTR token hunting or the relic races, but that's kind of against the point. They're sort of filler content for once you've completed the game. I would argue that CTR's story is not only the best in its franchise, but the best in the cartoon racing franchise as well. The villain is cool, the cutscenes are sharp, the racing is incentivized, you can't go wrong here. So it's all well and good talking about the content that's not the fucking racing in the game, so how is the racing? To answer that question, let me warn you right here. This game is no Mario Kart. This is the League of Legends of kart racing. It's fast, it's competitive, it's skill-based, you're not gonna be given an easy time. I'm just gonna say it straight up. The game holds your hand in offline mode, but as soon as you get online, it is a completely different story. If you're wanting to get good at this game, practice, practice, practice. With online being a now winner-takes-all environment, you need to know how to master this game before going up there. The gameplay itself is all about momentum, constantly drifting to keep your boost up there so you can fly by other players. The game revolves around a concept called Turbo. Now, turbo are the little fire sparks that come out of the back of your engine. The more fiery and big they are, the more speed you'll get in a race. You're able to get turbo from drifting and jumping up high ramps. It also encourages chaining. So the more and more you make use of these maneuvers, the more turbo will stack. That's right, you heard me, stack. You can go unbelievably fast in this game that it's almost uncanny. Think 200cc from Mario Kart, but with better controls. But because of the stacking system, during a race if you get hit, all of that speed you've just gained goes away completely. So that means you have to start back from square one. And because of how balanced and limited the item roster is, plus the fact that other players will be flying past you, if you fuck up, you fucked up. Unless you know what you're doing, you're not getting back into first place. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is the reason why Crash Team Racing is the best kart racer ever. Absolutely everything here is skill-based. Playing this game gives me such a shot of dopamine that it's- I, I love it. I love it so much. Even when I fuck up in a race and lose to some asshole, it, it motivates me to want to beat their ass again, so I keep playing and keep playing. The gameplay is addictive, and all it took was a few tweaks and turns to the original formula. It's so incredible that a concept that came out almost 16 years ago still holds up today. Something great about this game, however, is that the cosmetic differences like cart changes, wheels, characters don't actually make a difference to your stats at all. That being said, the bigger and heavier the character, the faster they'll go. But on the opposite end of the spectrum, the smaller the character, the better control and handling they'll have. Once again, I, I can't stress enough how much this game is like the chad of kart races. Let's briefly talk about the visuals and environments for a bit, as I feel they deserve some recognition. Everything is so crisp and clean and overflowing with detail. Everything pops, the textures look beautiful, the colours accommodate and contrast so well when they need to. Some stages even look completely different with a new coat of paint. They just, they, they just nailed it on the head. I have no complaints. I have zero complaints at all. It's perfect. I, it's flawless. It's absolutely flawless. So, character and content selection? Great. Levels? Great. Adventure mode? Great. Music? UNACCEPTABLE! This OST is fucking abysmal! There are a grand total of two songs I like in the entirety of CTR's soundtrack. Two! 
In the original CTR and CNK, the soundtracks were great, even amazing. But man, no offense to the composer, but this may be the worst OST I've ever heard in a video game. Ever. They have single-handedly ruined every single fucking music track in this game. Everything sounds the same. Every song feels like it sounds the same, but with a different arrangement. The guy is insistent on using the same instrument every song. Look, composer, whoever composed this game, look, I'm sure you're a great guy, but if I met you in real life, I'd steal your wallet. You know what, it's really daunting how many people don't know about Crash and Crash Team Racing, so I ran around Discord asking random people how they felt about Crash Team Racing Nitro Fuel. The facts that I have gathered Ben Shapiro's style are staggering. Ethan. Yellow. I need to ask you a really important question. Sure. What do you, wh how, how do you feel about Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled? Um... Haven't seen anything on Okay, you know what, that answer's not good enough, this isn't gonna work. Lich. I need to ask a really important question. Okay. How do you feel about Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled? Never played it. Yeah, of course you haven't, because you're a fucking fat- Zach, I need, to, I need to ask you a really important question. What? How do you feel about Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled? I've never played it. Okay, okay. My friend, my friend, Echidna6740. No, it's not, no, it's not, no, it's not! <laughs> do, you, do you- Are you a fan? Would you say that you're quite the fan of Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled? Sure. Answer, I mean, answer the question. Play. Yeah, give sure. me give me an essay right now. Give me a speech. This is this is the last year at university, right? This is your finals. You need to give me a good answer, right? Or you fail. Go now. Hey, uh, you know I I love uh, Crash Team Racing. Yeah, yeah, go on. Um, it's it's really good. Um, I like that you can go fast in it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, would you say would you say it's like Sonic? Because you go you go fast. <laughs> Who? Donald, mate. My 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 friend Donald 0741, right? I need to ask you a question. It's for a survey. Um, yeah. So, if I if I came to your house and I broke through your window, right, and then I put on your bed a copy of Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled, and then proceeded to hold a gun to your head, would you play it? Are you okay? okay Yo, okay. what's up? Strike, strike. All right. So. Yeah. I'm my friend. My friend. Strike. Hashtag nine six five eight. How do you how yeah. do you feel about Crash Team Racing Nitro Fuel? Is this all you want to talk about? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> my friend Joseph, my friend Joseph, I need to ask you an important question. Are you ready? Yeah. What if, what if Crash Bandicoot came to your house and held you at gunpoint? Bruh. Ladies and side gentlemen, at the time of this upload, we have received some tragic news. Some news that will will make and break this game for many. Cash kitties can now pay with real money to get cosmetics that they like. This game is sold out to the concept of microtransactions. But in all seriousness, if I was to criticize one thing about Crash Team Racing in its current state, it's that microtransactions should not be a thing. In my opinion and many others, Crash Bandicoot shouldn't be a series that banks off of microtransactions as a concept. But whatever, if you want to buy your way up to the higher tiers or buy all the cosmetics early, you, you can do that now. Sweet. I, however, refuse to spend a cent on this game, as I've already spent like 79 bucks on it. Unless, of course, it has to do with Papu Papu's ass. The good news is microtransactions apparently won't affect the rate in which you get one per coins online, so hey, there's that. Speaking of online, let's talk about online and how in general it sucks ass. Okay, that sounded a little bit too overly critical, but hear me out here, alright? Online has one big problem, and it is monstrous. And it's not the fact that you can't have a decent fucking race online, or the fact that the servers are complete shit, or the fact that if you decide to go off, turn your internet off, turn it back on and go back in, nothing changes apart from the fact that all the players are CPUs now? No. No. What is it, you may be asking? <laughs> well... I'm just joking, it's the pit stop. 
By playing online in CTR Nitro Fuel, you'll maximize the amount of coins you get per day. While if you decide to play offline, you'll barely get enough money for a blowjob by Big Nor. Said money is used to purchase said content from about 50... You know, okay, I just realized the content of this video was all over the fucking place. Racing equals money. Money equals pit stop. Pit stop equals cosmetics, alright? You buy cosmetics with your money. Now why would this be a bad thing, you may ask? Because Krungle Vision have decided to wrap their little fucking dirty pickle fingers around it. In order to maximize your profit from playing the game, you need to be connected to the online network and be playing online. If for some fucking reason you're not connected to the online, which is like... 40% of Switch users, you'll be getting like, maybe one costume every 5 or 6 hours. And I know exactly why they've done this, because the game is so online orientated, players will be more inclined to purchase Wumper coin bundles and spend more money on the game. And because you can only access the pit stop online, this truly is a recipe for disaster. To new users planning to buy CTR Nitro Fueled, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you one little bit of advice here. Do not spend a cent online. You can earn heaps of that money just by playing the game for a few hours, alright? I, I think it's like, on the weekends you can earn like 5,000 in one day, and two day 10,000 in two days. That's fantastic. That's all you need. Don't buy into the scam. Don't buy into Activision being a piece, piece of shit. <laughs> it's time to summarize my thoughts as I've pretty much dragged on the circus of low tier humor long enough. This game has only been out for nearly like two months and I've already spent like 200 hours on this game. Even though this game is a kart racer, I still feel like I'm working towards something greater by playing this. It's fundamentally rich, it's content rich, it's quality rich, it's perfect. It's, well, you know. It's not perfect, but it's great. I've been seeing a lot of people come out stating that CTR on Atrofield is not worth it because it has microtransactions, and to be honest, I think you're a fucking idiot. You've got to understand that at the end of the day, this game is an extremely high quality game done by a passionate dev team. This game does succeed in so many areas, but in the areas that it fails, it's a real bummer, like it's a real shame. But this game is worth the money, it's worth every cent. I've had so much enjoyment out of this in the past few months. It's honestly, it's honestly lightened my mood a lot, to be fair. I've got a lot of love for this game, and to be honest, I only really got into Crash Team Racing a few years ago, so I don't really have any great nostalgia for this game. And even that aside, I think it's just phenomenal. Like, I don't, uh, wow, fucking take a shot for how many times I say phenomenal. Now don't get me wrong, you are more than entitled to hate the microtransaction part of this game. It's scummy, it's stupid, it does not need to fucking be there. However, I don't think it takes away from the quality of this package. If you're looking for a kart racer that's fun, family friendly, just uh, depthful, <laughs> fucking depthful, just, just buy it, buy it. Spend money, buy this game. Don't buy the microtransactions though, just, just buy the game. Buy it, just buy it. Join me next time as I read an unnecessarily long and serious review about an ironic Sonic fan game. <laughs>